Today we're going to be looking at this machine that I built a couple of weeks ago again because I've made some improvements to it. It is a virtually real-time pitch shifting machine that is made from a tape loop and a rotating tape head that spins around right here. As we saw in the previous video if the tape head spins with the speed of the tape it actually goes down in pitch but if it spins backwards to the tape it goes up in pitch. You can go anywhere from a monster all the way up to a chipmunk or anything in between. It's based on an image that Heimbach showed me. It's a principle that was used in a machine called the Tempophon. In fact, there was a Tempophon that only the other week went up on a music auction site, Sphere Music. And um, yeah, unfortunately, I got outbid. And I got outbid on a weird like prototype version of it as, as well. Damn you, I hope you blooming enjoy it. Um, looking at this image, you'll see that there, it's actually the Tempophon, the original machine, was actually an add-on to a reel-to-reel -reel machine. So that makes me think that it wasn't actually designed to be a real-time, well, virtually real-time pitch machine. Um, because the read head, the recording head that would record onto the tape would be so far away from the read head that it wouldn't actually practically be useful because there'll be a heck of a lot of a delay between where you speak and where you record. Its function in that form is still very useful because it is able to change the pitch up or down but not change the speed, which would not be possible with a normal tape machine because in order to make the pitch go up or down, you need to change the speed of the tape. in the comments there was a lot of suggestions one of the main ones was asking why i didn't use a vcr player drum head this is a reed head inside a vhs player it's basically a drum that spins around at a slight angle so it reads and as it spins around it reads the vhs tape why I didn't use that is because honestly, I think this was a simpler and more effective approach. I did have a think about it, but in order to make it work, you'd have to figure a way of making it slant perfectly right. And then the other downside is most of them, most ones that you can find have two tape heads. So you'd have to wrap the tape around the whole 180 degrees. And if you didn't use VHS tape and just used uh, tape stuff like this to make the loop, it would have been really hard to um, align it right. So I don't think it's practically uh, that useful of a means of doing so. Another thing about the VHS tape head is the way it transfers the uh, electrical impulses from the spinning device to the wires that are below it. Uh, it uses a transformer so as it spins around there is another kind of electrical coupling. With this I used something called a slip ring. What that is is the wires go in the bottom of the slip ring and the wires come out the top of the slip ring but they're able to spin away independently without getting taffled up. That's because in the middle there's a metal shaft with some brushes around it so as it spins around the uh, wires are able to maintain electrical contact but they get to spin around a lot of comments saying oh that's gonna make it noisy it's gonna be too noisy it's gonna be noisy but if you listen well it's not noisy because the noise floor is the same whether this is moving or not moving so yeah the effect of that is too low to worry about in fact I did think about this when I made my first spinning tape machine idea thingamajiggy uh, the Crystal Palace uh, if you look at this it's a spinning thing with a tape head on the top of it you'll notice that I was thinking this was going to be a problem so I made the tape amplification circuit on the actual tape head side of the slip ring the idea being the signal to noise ratio would be much higher uh, but actually after tests it didn't really make a bit of difference. Also there is another thing that I did in that Crystal Palace machine uh, thinking that noise would be a problem and that is that was powered by a stepper motor and if you see there the stepper motor is miles away from the machine because I thought the stepper motor was going to make some adverse noise effects onto the actual Crystal Palace machine but I didn't bother doing that in this one as you can see the stepper motor underneath the tape speed is directly underneath it and the stepper motor here is you know in the vicinity of the tape the tape is still far enough away for it to completely not affect it like obviously if you remove the noise floor it might be when I improve the electronics because we'll have a chat about what I've done to improve this so far but I still think it's a very small issue and the advantages of using a stepper motor which we'll find out later in this video I think outweigh the minimal effect from the noise which I, I don't think is there anyway anyway let's have a chat about what I've done to improve it in truth I haven't really done that much what I did first was transfer it, like I mentioned in the previous video, from tape, cassette tape, which is very thin, it's 1 
length to one quarter inch tape. As you can see, I've just 3D printed the actual items slightly larger and then I've just replaced them. So they're exactly the same, they're just a little wider. I had to add extra washers into this part and extra washers onto the uh, cap stand tensioner thingamajig and I had to print a new head that was a little bit wider but I ended up also using the copycat tape heads as well because they're mono tape heads. Mono tape heads are good because they've got wide track and the, ten and the tolerances for the tape could be rubbish because I'm rubbish at making things so the tolerance being bad is fine. Anyway, uh, I just bolted it back together. Here's me making a new tape loop. It's a lot easier using quarter inch tape because it's a lot wider and it takes a lot more tension. I've added another tensioner here which is just an impact socket in this but I updated it later on. And I also 3D printed a new drive wheel because the one I made with hot glue in the video last was too bumpy so this is much smoother. <laughs> these uh, tape driver boards off the internet, the TA7668. Uh, it really didn't work for me. I just couldn't have any luck with it. It sounded crap. So I used the copycats electronics. I could put it back at some point, but it works for now. The other day I messed around for 20 minutes or so, putting different things into this machine. And that video, the full video is over on Patreon, but here's some snippets of it. You could download the direct recording as well and chop it up to use as samples if you'd so please. Anyway, take it away, Funky Monkey Mark II. And if I slow the tape down, the fidelity goes down because you've got to run at tape speed, but you can get much more pitch variation to nearly zero. We top stop the tape, there's a mini tape loop in there. This is it playing the drums backwards now in little chunks. Sort of like glan not glandular fever. Um, what is it? Granular synthesis. Currently, the delay between the audio input and the effect output is about uh, 80 milliseconds. That's because the tape record heads here and the read heads there. Uh, we could probably make it quicker if we move it a little bit closer. I reckon I could get it a tiny bit closer and also speed up the tape a little bit more. We might be able to improve that. But we can use this inherent delay to our advantage by also sending it back into itself, turning it into a tape delay, but not any tape delay, a pitch shifting tape delay. You'll notice that it's becoming a delay, but there's also a pitch shift to the delay. So it's a pitch shifting delay. Now it's going slower, the delay is bringing it down. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, let's try it with vocals now. <laughs> We've all 
this stuff in mind, you can plug a guitar into this, and that's when I think this really comes into its own. <laughs> The delay isn't horrendous, so you could scrape it by as a pitch shifter. And also a harmonizer. I still think the best trick in its book is still the crazy space sounds because it doesn't sound like a digital thing but it doesn't sound like a tape thing because these things don't really exist it's still crazy <laughs> decided to make it look a little bit more retro by adding this Tolex and I think the Tolex was actually put into these old products to uh, cover over really bad woodwork because that's what I'm doing. Anyway now we're going to add control vinyl voltage input jacks into each of the pots. I plug them into another analog input of the Arduino drivers for the stepper motors and all we do is we just add another analog input into the code. It adds it to the knob so basically the knob plus the control voltage is the speed of the tape. Uh, so so yeah, and then we're gonna give it a go by plugging some things in. Let's see what it sounds like when we got a control voltageable. Now we have the control voltage input into the machine, so we can control the speeds of this and this using things like this sequencer. For instance, if I twist the knob over on this 2001 keyboard sequencer, I can make it slow down. If we press play, we can bounce between each of these knobs, which will all have different speeds. Hello. What happens if we put it on the tape speed instead? So now we are controlling the tape speed instead. Okay, now let's try and also feed it back into a cell whilst this is happening. Anyway, let's try 
drum player with some drum beats and some drum to some music show. Another thing that I wanted to try was trying it with an expression pedal. So the expression pedal would send the voltage into it so you could potentially adjust the intervals of the harmonies. But I didn't have an expression pedal. I don't know, it's just gone missing. So we're gonna plug it into a theremin instead. In fact, it's the same theremin I plugged into my Mini. So I've decided to plug a theremin via some electronics into the throttle cable of my car. Why, why not? and it's still actually got the rev counter on it from that. Uh, so we're gonna plug it in and it turned out it was a lot harder to kind of tune the intervals on the theremin, so I basically just bounced around with it. Anyway, have a look. So for this video, I think that's it for this machine. I'm gonna keep on having a go, this and that and the other. I'm gonna improve the electronics. I think the electronics are the things that let this down, particularly the tape writing circuitry. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna try and increase the fidelity somewhat, but that, I don't know when that's gonna be, let's just see. But if you wanna see more information about things like that, you will see it first over on Patreon because I document all of the projects and things that I'm working on at the time in videos, live streams and things like that over there. You can also download samples that I've made from this machine from this video and the video before and loads of others over on there and needless to say that helps support uh, spending time and money on things like this uh, for videos like this so if you enjoy these videos have a think about popping a couple of quid on over there but it's all good if not just enjoy them anyway anyway that's it from me and the funky monkey mark II, and i'll see you next time if you like me don't forget to subscribe and remember let us get to try it Ooh.